Good day, viewers. Welcome to Bible study. We are glad to come to you again today, another time that the Lord has made and prepared for us to hear from Him. And uh, we urge you to draw closer, bring your pen and paper, call your friends and where we shall for us to study together and hear what the Lord has for us. You are welcome. Today we are looking at study number 43. Still continue in our team for the year, which is the Christian race and the sub team motivators in the Christian race. Today we are looking at it for the sixth time. And the topic we are looking at, the character, the motivator we are looking at today is Isaac. Isaac as a motivator to running this Christian race. And our text will be taken from the book of Genesis chapter 27 from verse 27 to 40 and we also look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20. Today the Lord has prepared his vessels that he will use to bring to bear his mind, his intentions and to reveal the motivations which we need to run this race. Uh, we are privileged today to have by my left Dr. Mrs. Azo Kaziki a Bible study teacher from All Saints Anglican Church, we say Zone 5. Doc, you're very much welcome. Thanks for having me. Good day, viewers. Thank you. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Welcome. And by my right, we also have a Dr. Mrs. Yemisi Olaware, a Bible study teacher from uh, St. Matthew's Anglican Church, Maitama. Doc, you're welcome. Good day, viewers. Thanks for joining us. And we are also privileged to have our sign language interpreter, Sister Susan Awodi, joining us and doing the Lord's work. Sister Susan, the Lord bless you. I am your uncle, Din Chukwemeka, Israel. The aims for our study today are to critically analyze the faith passed on to Isaac. Secondly, to enlighten us on the blessings of Isaac to his sons and to inspire us on the importance of prophetic prayers for our children at old age. We will proceed to take the test and Dr. Azokazike will help us to do that. The text, ma'am. The text is taken from Genesis 27, 27 to 40. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him and said, Surely the, bless, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cause be everyone who causes you, and blessed be those who bless you. Now it happened, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob has scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father, and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. When he saw heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now, look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master, and all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth, 
and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The introduction. It says, Isaac was the promised child of God to Abraham and Sarah. However, the inquiry of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22 verse 7 suggests that Abraham, his father, had influenced him in deep faith. This clearly manifests in Isaac's blessing his sons, which could be seen as prophecies and foretelling of what they shall become in the future. One of our songs, our hymn, says, It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him by his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thought says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I've proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. That is what Isaac did. A very conversant passage we have, we know, trust in Jesus. Men have proved him over and again. Even in our own journey, even in our only two race here, we've proved him over and again. Brethren, all we just need to do to persevere in this race is to ask for the grace to continue to trust him, irrespective of what it is, for today, for tomorrow, and years past. One of our hymns says, Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. That is what he has been doing. That is what he will continue to do. Our study guide will help us, even as we look at it, to look at Isaac, what he did, how he lived his life to motivate us in running this race and it is our prayer that by the time we are done we'll be able to achieve this aim set out for us by the grace of god in jesus name amen now proceeding to the study guide which will help us to understand the motivations and lessons we need to take out from take away from the character isaac in motivating us in this race um dr laurema you will help us to take study um the answer study one it says critically study genesis chapter 22 verse 7 and analyze the fate of isaac in your own understanding okay genesis 22 7 says but isaac spoke to abraham his father and said my father and he said here i am my son then he said look the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering if we look at this verse we'll notice some few points there number one isaac not only knew that there was an animal to be used for this sacrifice for this burnt offering mm -hmm. but he was specific he knew the exact animal he said where is the lamb this was a child that was paying attention to detail. Yes. It showed that he was being taught and he was detailed in his teaching. And he was paying attention to what he was being taught. Secondly, he showed great understanding. How? He listed the things that were needed for this sacrifice. He said, my father, here is the fire. And here is the wood. Yes. But where is the lamp? This was a child that showed great wisdom. He was following his daddy to sacrifice each time. And he had already noted the things that were needed. He was not making a mistake. He did not mention anything that was not needed for that sacrifice. Yes. When is that told him, if we read further, is that told him that the... The things uh, that God was going to provide, provide. the animal, yes. the, the lamb. Mm. He did not question any further. Mm. This was a child that was being groomed thoroughly in the ways of God. And he displayed great faith there. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. did not question any further. He mm. believed. He, knew, he, he also believed that God was going to provide. So this was a demonstration of great faith. Isaac was a man of great faith and he started it right from his childhood as we see in this passage. Excellent. 
Thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, ma'am. Um, uh, Dr. Azike, do you have any contribution to that? No, I just have a in little... In trying to analyze the faith Isaac has beaten in the passage with Genesis 22. Mm, just 7. a little bit to buttress the points that have been made. Yes. Isaac was not serving God from afar. He understood the faith of his fathers. Mm. And that was what was demonstrated. That wasn't yes. his first time of seeing a sacrifice done. So for him to ask about the components of the sacrifice shows that he must have seen that over and over again. Yes. So he wasn't following God from afar. He knew what his father was doing. And, and we can actually bring it home that uh, parents shouldn't just serve God alone. Yes. They should take along their, their children. children. You know, uh, concerning the children of Israel, the Bible said that they just saw the ass of God. But for Moses, Moses saw his ways. Yes. And that was why when Moses went up and the children of Israel couldn't uh, they, they were not, yes, they, they were impatient because they it. never really knew God. True. But in Isaac, we can see a, a man, a boy, that was so close to his father and was to the extent that he knew exactly the faith of the fathers, of his fathers, and he knew the God his father was serving. Excellent. Praise thank you, Lord. thank you, thank you very much. Beyond what you've stated, brethren, Isaac understanding this faith, Isaac knowing what was required for sacrifice, has mm. been seeing it over and over again. In analyzing the faith of Isaac, I, I will come from the aspect that he was initially in doubt. Father, I've been seeing us offer sacrifices to God. At all times when we go, these are the things we use to make sacrifice. But in this case, there is no lamb. And Abraham said, the Lord will provide. Mm. The Bible did not record that Isaac said, ask any other thing. Mm. His faith, his belief, in the assurance from his father, the faith of his father, which he has come to imbibe on his, uh, by himself, was complete, unconditional. He didn't ask, what do you mean now? When have, ever, when have God ever provided that we are going to sacrifice? He said, God will provide that. We have always been the one doing this. How, the, how is it this one going to happen, Father Abraham? No, Isaac didn't do that. It was a man that has come, I, I believe that having been born, one in a, once in a while, Ada Sarah would have told him, My son, we waited though before you were giving birth. This is what happened. This is what we went through. This is he had known the story, had known the faith his father's if his father and mother went through before they begot him. And even while he has been given birth to growing in Abraham's house, he has hold on to what the father said, what they have been doing. I have seen it come true. So in analyzing his faith here, both to what his father said and in belief in his belief in God, it was total, complete, and unconditional. And what do we take away from the child, uh, children of God? What it is, like we are looking at today, he is a motivator for us. We see how he held on to the faith that God will provide, and there was no doubt about that. God will provide. He didn't bring psychology into it. He didn't bring jurisprudence into it. He didn't begin to analyze, oh, for the journey of two days, here is a wilderness. Where is it going to come from? Father Abraham, are you not sure we should call somebody on phone and say, please, start making arrangements in case God doesn't provide? No, it wasn't the same. How is our faith? Isaac, as a motivator for us in running this race. May the Lord help us to have this faith in him that is unconditional in Jesus' name. Amen. Going further, we look at the second question. Dr. Zike, you will help us with that. It says from Genesis chapter 27, uh, verse 22, 27 to 29, and verse 39 to 40. Uh, Dr. Olawere, you will help us with verse 39 to 40. It says, analyze the blessings of Isaac to his sons. Are the blessings prophetic or just ordinary prayers? What can we learn from this for our old age? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From Genesis 27, 27 to 29. Yes. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you, and nations bow to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's son bow to you. Cause be everyone who causes you, and blessed be those who bless you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, ma'am. Then, uh, Genesis twenty-seven thirty-nine to 40. Yes. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth, 
and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Dr. Zika, quickly, how can you analyze the blessings of Isaac to his sons? Are they just mere prayers or they were they prophetic? And what is the lesson there for us? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looking at the uh, scripture in Genesis 27 and also in Hebrews, the Bible said that by faith mm. that Isaac blessed Esau and Jacob yes. concerning things, things to come. In future. It takes faith to speak into the future. So he wasn't just speaking. He was being prophetic. And coming from the lineage of faith, it even makes it more prominent. And also looking at us as children of God, that when we speak, uh, we should consider that we don't just speak. Even when you don't intend to, just our mere words mean a whole lot. Looking at the second part of the, uh, uh, the question, yes. he said, what can we learn from this for our old age? Yes. I, I don't think we need to get to old age to learn this. <laughs> as long as you are alive, James yes. chapter 3 said that the tongue can, as small as it is, yes. can set the whole course of nature on fire. And we can see from what happened here, he blessed Jacob completely. It was 100% blessing. Yes. But for Esau, it wasn't 100%. Mm. If we look at uh, 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 verse 40, you can see that there was something that looked like a cost there. Although uh, like he gave a leeway. Yes. He said that when you are restless, yes. you break out from it. So I was, as Christians, as well as I was, the children of God are waiting. So, and we've been called to be a blessing. So we should be very intentional when we speak, whether we are young or we are old, whether we are speaking to the elderly or speaking to our children or younger people, we should know that we are speaking, we should speak life. And that if we do it the other way, we may end up speaking death into the life of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Laura, do you have any contribution to that very briefly so that we'll conclude on the question? Okay. I would like to add that uh, the, the second part that says that are those blessings uh, just Prophetic mere words, just ordinary prayers. Just ordinary prayers. Hmm. They are not ordinary prayers. How do we hmm. know that? The Bible says uh, when Esau came in and said, "Don't you this have is, any other This one is Esau, your firstborn son." Yes. Jacob started trembling Seems uncontrollably. Shivering. Yes. He was afraid because he had spoken the words. They were prophetic words, mm. and he said something. He said, "And these words must come to pass." Uh, he was so sure it was going to come to pass because it came from a place of an elderly person that thought he was going to die at that moment. Mm. He was given his life. He was given his authority. He was given everything he had. So he knew that those words must come to pass. And how else can we know that those words will come to pass? The way Isaac took, uh, Esau took it, Esau screamed. The Bible he says he screamed. He, he knew that he was done for. Yes. His brother had received his blessings. Mm. So, they were not just ordinary prayers. Yes. And if we read further in that passage, you, you will see that every of those words that Isaac spoke came to pass. Eventually. Because Laban refused to let Jacob go because he was being blessed. Yes. And because Jacob was with him, he was being blessed. He knew that this was a blessed man. Yes. So, it was because of the blessings he had received from Isaac. So those were not just ordinary words, they were prophetic words. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And now, in summing up this question, mm -hmm. I, I want to come from the later part, talking about what we can learn from our old age. Mm -hmm. Isaac could have easily lied to Esau. When he came and said, I am, he could have easily said, oh, okay, I will bless you, it will be well with you. And But he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to, in quote, Take up the good father figure. Oh, okay, I can still bless myself. He did not deceive Esau. That, oh, I have blessed him, but I can still bless you because he has given it all out. And now, talking about, in that aspect, what do we do as parents? We are talking about what we should learn from this for our old age. And Dr. Zika said we don't need to leave it to old age. From now, what do we do? How do we respond to our children, to our subordinates, to those that are around us, with what is expected of us as our responsibility? Do we play the politically correctness? 
so that they will not be angry, so that they will not be offended. We tell them, yes, it is true. What you want to hear, you will tell them. It is not expected of us. Now, the words of Isaac to his children, they were not mere words. They were prophetic. Because you agree with me from what we have looked in the first question, he says, it is this same Isaac, is this same Isaac that know how he came to be the son of Abraham and Sarah. Is this same Isaac that went through the experience of where is the lamb? And Father Abraham said, God will provide when we get there. It is this same Isaac that lived it. He got there and saw it, that God provided. So he wasn't speaking mere words. He wasn't just saying because he wanted to say. He knew that what he said is going to happen. And that brings me to the point of how do we, as we talked earlier, what is it that we speak into our lives, into the life of our children, into our own individual life as well. And even for the younger ones, the youth, the children, what is it that we do that elicits, that pushes our parents to speak to us? Our reactions, our attitude, what do we do that make them speak? And what do they speak to us? It has effect. It is for the future. May the Lord help us so that the faith of these our fathers will be the faith we will hold on to and be true to it in running this race in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We will be back. We'll go for a short break. Thank you. There are standards in life, mm -hmm. but the beauty of it is that we have the highest standard. Lord, we decree Video upon this nation, we decree peace upon Nigeria. Receive illumination Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray every negative prophecy concerning your life is cancelled. Amen. Lord, we ask, oh God, for your healing. Cancer, we speak to you. Bow in the name of Jesus. Every siege, whatever battle, sicknesses and diseases, we pack and go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever that battle that comes your way this year, I pray you will dominate. Amen. I pray for you today. That situation will turn around for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Join every Thursdays at 6 p.m. West African time. Welcome back. We're still continuing in our study, looking at Isaac as a motivator to run in this Christian race. And we are still joined by our mothers and Bible teachers, um, Dr. Azoka Azike from All Saints Anglican Church, who says on five, is still here with us. Welcome back once again, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And we still have Dr. Mrs. Yemisi Olawore from us uh, from St. Matthew's Anglican Church. Rather, sorry about that. My Tama, she's still here with Thank us. You. Doc, welcome. Thank you. And our sister, Sister Susan Awodi, is still here doing the Lord's work. Thank you, and welcome back once again. In proceeding with the study. We are looking at the third study guide now. And um, Dr. Lawarema, you will help us take that. He say, how did Isaac and Rebecca resolve the impending dangerous conflict between their sons because of Isaac's blessing? You will help us take Genesis chapter 27, 41 to 45. And, and Dr. Azike, you will take um, Genesis chapter 25, verse 5. And then we'll share your thoughts. Okay. Yes, Genesis 27, 41 to 45. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. And the words of Esau, our older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you now therefore my son obey my voice arise flee to my brother laban in haran and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him then i will send and bring you from there 
Why should I be bereaved also of you, both in one day? The word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Okay. Genesis 28. 28, 28 verse 5. Right. We'll come back to your thoughts, okay. Yes, ma. Go ahead. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padan Aram, to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob, and Esau. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, Doc. Okay. The question says, how did Isaac and Rebekah resolve the impending dangerous, dangerous conflict? conflict? Yes. For any parent to be able to resolve any dangerous conflict or any conflict at all between their children, the parents must be sensitive. And that's the first thing we will note in the life of Rebecca here. Mm. Rebecca always knew what was going on in her family. In the first place, she was the one that heard when Isaac was telling Esau that he was going to bless him. He should go to the field and get something for him to eat. How did she hear? She was very sensitive. After that again, J uh, Esau said he was going to kill Jacob. This passage, this verse, this uh, translation says, in his heart. Perhaps she was praying and God told her. So... And uh, another verse, my another version might say something else, but from this version here, he said he said this in his heart, but she knew. So a parent must be very sensitive in order to be able to solve any problem in the home. Yes. And how did she go about it? She called him and told him that her brother, wa his brother, was going to kill him, so he needed to run away to Laban. And she also took another step. She went to Isaac. And told Isaac that she doesn't want Jacob to marry from that place where they were. Because she, she, the women in that place were adulterous women. Yes. So she told her husband that she did not tell her husband that Esau was about to kill Jacob. But her husband also responded very well. Isaac, whom we are learning about today, he took a very good step. He called his son and even blessed him for that. He blessed Jacob at that time. He blessed him further and instructed him to go and marry from his mother's brother's house. So what are the lessons we learn from this? I want to bring out a very important key. Isaac did not say that Laban, uh, Laban was the mother's brother. Some people will say, that is my wife's family. How can my wife's family be a blessing to me? He knew that husband and wife are supposed to be one. So we must, we must be one in order to solve conflicts in our home, in order to solve sibling rivalry. We must be one as parents. So he agreed with his wife, and he did not say that the help that they needed must come from his own family. After, after Abraham, we yes. So he, he did not say th that help must come from his own family. He agreed that his wife's family should help them. Another point is that we as parents should always see to the peace of our children. Mm. It costed Rebecca because he never s she never saw Jacob again. She didn't see him again. It costed her. She had to sacrifice that. But she saw to the peace of her children. She saw to the peace of the two brothers so that there will be no death in her family. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so very mm -hmm. much. Thank you very much. Dr. Zikema, do you have any input in that so that they just have your thoughts and then we proceed? Yes, ma'am. What I can see here is that the couple agreed. They didn't play discordant tone. They were together in this. Just, just like the question said, how did they avoid this dangerous? It was murder that was about happening in that family. But because they were united, they were able to avert that. And I can also see a method of conflict resolution here. Mm -hmm. It's not every time that you confront issues. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it may be wise to avoid issues. And what we can see here is avoidance, temporary separation, mm -hmm. which in some cases have helped to prevent some people from dying. Mm -hmm. So we should learn that from the Bible. And also, Whenever there is conflict, we should find out the mind of God. There may be times God may want you to confront. We can see the case of Gideon, that he was hiding, and God brought him out from hiding to go and fight the Midianites. Mm -hmm. But we can also see when Herod wanted to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. And God himself told Jacob, take this child away. 
So wisdom, first of all, comes from listening to God and knowing how to avert a conflict. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And Sarah actually intervened. From what we have listened, to, what we have heard, they actually did their best in resolving it. Like one thing that stood out there is their unanimous agreement on where Jacob should go. Uh, Dr. Lowry mentioned it. Isaac did not say why going to your brother's house or why. And no, at that point, it wasn't a time of apportioning blame. It wasn't about you are the one that sent this boy. Because, you know, something stood out for me. I was asking when, when, when uh, Jacob presented the meal he made to uh, Abraham. Abraham was asking, who is this person? He said, it's me, I am your son. Yes, it took him even smelling him to convince himself and say, okay, this is Esau. But immediately Esau came in. Abraham did not ask. He asked initially, who was the person that came? And I said, your brother. How? Like, he never asked. You know, that he stood out like, you are just confused about who is this person? And then he said initially, somebody have come and taken your blessing. But he now said, he's your brother. At that point, so for him to have known that Jacob have done this. It is also possible that you have known that uh, Sarah must have engineered this. But it wasn't the time to apportion blame. They were together. All they were looking for is how to resolve it. As much as this was spiritually orchestrated, more than physical, but there's something that stood out there for me. Like we are saying in the later part of the question, what lessons can we derive from this? As much as we are learning the lessons that we should pick up that will help us in running this race, in resolving issues, be it in the office, be it at home, between between siblings, be it between spouse. There are also lessons that are salient that we must also look at, not to take from this situation. One of them, for me, is the fact that neither Abraham nor Sarah came out to condemn the deceit of uh, Jacob. Like I said, yes, it may have been spiritually orchestrated for the will of God to do, for the will of God to be done. But this, there are times that we need to. You just mentioned the issue of Gideon, that we need to come out and say what is wrong is wrong, what is right is right. These are the lessons we need to pick on in running this race. But above all, we must always yield. To the leading of the Spirit. How can we yield to that if it is not indwelling in us? So we pray that Lord, the Lord will help us as much as we take these lessons to also have always at all time the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide us. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the last question there, Dr. Azike will come to you for that. It says, as Christians, how best can we pass on the faith to the coming generation? beginning from our households. We have some couple of scriptures there. Uh, um, um, Dr. Azika, you help us with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, Dr. Olaure, you help us with Proverbs chapter 19. I will take the other two uh, passages and then we we'll share in your thoughts on that. Okay. Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them di diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, Dr. Lawry. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Chasing your son while there is hope, and do not set your heart on his destruction. The word of God. Thanks be to mm -hmm. God. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 21 says... Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they should become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, Dr. Zike. How is the best way we can pass this faith that we are receiving now, having looked at these motivators? How can we pass it to the coming generation? People have said that they really weep, they really cry for the next generation because of what we are seeing in this era, in the Gen Z's, in all that is happening around us. How can we ensure that this little light of ours does not go off in our own hand. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible said that Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. So he was made the first prototype. Yes. And the intention is that he replicates himself in us. And at the same time, we we'll replicate him in Going others. Further. So that's what God expects for us. For the coming generation, if we look at the passages we've read, right from Deuteronomy, it said that this world shouldn't be scarce in our families. It should be 
so rich, just like the uh, Bible said in Colossians 3, mm. that whether you are sitting or whether you are standing or whether you are driving, that the word of God shouldn't be a scarce commodity. You know, we used to have this uh, uh, plaque that they normally hang in houses, that Christ is the unseen guest. At every no, Christ shouldn't be a guest in any house. <laughs> he should be. Yes. He shouldn't be. more of portraits and <laughs> yes. everything yes. in the house. And he shouldn't even be a guest. Mm. He should be present. He should be communicated. So faith should be communicated to the younger generation. And it's not just communicating faith. It should be demonstrated. What do I mean by that? When there is a problem in the home. When uh, maybe if someone is sick, or a child is looking for admission or looking for a job, that's an opportunity to demonstrate faith. Yes. So parents, fathers, mothers should demonstrate this faith. You know, the Bible, when the Bible talked about the man that was paralyzed that the friends but brought in, the Bible yes. said when Jesus saw their faith. So it shouldn't just be spoken. The faith mm -hmm. should be seen that by the younger generation. Yes. Then when we look at the book of Proverbs 19.18, say, correct your child when there is still hope. You know, sometimes people assume, no, he's a small boy. He mm -hmm. will grow it. Mm -hmm. No. There are attributes that when you see the good ones, you will nurture. But some, there are some that you have to correct it from. If you don't, then the child will eventually, just like a seed of corn, will eventually turn into, uh, uh, will eventually grow and produce and start more producing. And more God. It's just like that. Then uh, Pro Proverbs 22 says, train up a child. There is a way a child should go. Exactly. But that also means that the parents is going that way. You must because know the way. To yes, if you don't know way. the way, exactly. you won't be able to communicate that way. Then Colossians 3.21 talks about not provoking our children. You know, so, uh, when you have a, a father or a mother that is abusive, we've seen what the words of Isaac did to exactly. both. Their life just took took shape. after those took shape Someday. after what he said. Yes. And that's the way that verbally a parent can actually destroy their children. And even when you are a good parent, there are some things you do outside. You know, sometimes when I see on the news, they will say maybe this professor uh, sexually harassed uh, and down the <laughs> professor is in prison. I'll be wondering, this How? professor, is this professor somebody's father? <laughs> so that's provocation. When you embezzle government funds and you are taken to go and your children are seeing it, you are You're provoking, provoking your children. So as parents, we should be examples. Let them see mm -hmm. Christ in you. Not, not just you talking about, let them see Christ demonstrated in us. Thank Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Mm -hmm. Alawiri, very briefly, please. Okay. Very briefly. <laughs> yes. I would like to bring it home. Thank you. Like this Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7 says that you shall teach them diligently. You shall talk of them when you sit, when you walk, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That's mm -hmm. repetition, especially for our younger children. We must always repeat it. Mm -hmm. Let's keep repeating the word of God to them. Let it sink into them. Then we can have family Bible studies. Mm -hmm. You know, so many parents organize so many things for their children, but Bible study is always lacking in the home. Have family Bible study. Even if it's 10 minutes every week, 10 minutes every day, it's possible. Let's just make out time to study the word of God with our children. Yes, and also... She was talking about displaying plaques in the house. You can have places where you put memory verses in their rooms, yes. you know, in some corners in the home, so that every time they look at it, they see it, and they will say, this is God's word. Before you know it, they know those verses, and it, it will keep repeating in their minds. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. We have spoken well. Tide of God, we have all heard it. The Bible said, he that knows what is right to do and does not do it, unto him is counted as sin. How did he even receive it? This faith that we are talking about, that we have, how did we receive it? So passing it should not be more of a problem. The, the basis of it all is to live by example. Be indeed a Christian, a, 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 a Christian father, a Christian mother to these ones that are looking up to us. And despite all, in, irrespective of all that we have said, above all, we should not cease to pray for this next generation. Mm. Because as much as we are doing, as much as we are planting, the devil is not relenting. He is also doing his own. So as much as we are doing this, we must regularly and frequently uphold this generation before God. Even as Job did it. And it is our prayer that while we do that, our own faith will be strengthened. And by the time we run this race and finish it, God will not ask us 
what did you come with and we have nothing to present but it will be unto us that we come and he will say welcome you faithful servants of mine having run the race and having handed it over to those that are still running it may the lord help us in the name of jesus Amen. conclusion he said isaac as the first beneficiary of the abrahamic faith lived by faith until the end he didn't leave it by the way he didn't leave it by the way he ended and even handed it over he left a legacy of blessing we as children of god must leave a legacy of faith for our children yet even those born and yet unborn as christians we must uphold this legacy and impact on our children the faith of our fathers which is a holy faith may the lord help us in the name of jesus Amen. food for thought says keep the faith and pass on the faith keep the faith and pass on the faith the memory of us will take it together galatians, galatians chapter, chapter 4, 4 verse 28, 28 and it says now, now we, we brethren, brethren as isaac was, was are the children of promise we take it again galatians chapter 4 verse, verse 28. 28 now we brethren as isaac was are the children of faith father it is our desire and our cry to also stand out and become examples for those that will run this race after us to look at us to look at our our lives and the legacies we are leaving behind to say indeed men has gone have walked through here and we must step into their feet their shoes and make the same impact in jesus name we have prayed Amen. we must thank graciously our resource persons dr azike may the lord bless you and straighten you the more we are always very much grateful to have you and we hope to see you more again Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and Dr. Olawere, the Lord bless you. Thank, Thank you, so you for coming. Thanks and for we are most me. you're welcome. You. You're welcome. We are most grateful. And our uh, sister, sister Susanna Wodi, may the Lord continue to strengthen and bless you in Jesus' name. Remember, I'm still your uncle, Dinne Chukwemeka Israel. We'll see you next time. The Lord bless you. Bye.